Ark is dead, or at least it's dying and on life support. And I know it's not the news that I wanted to be delivering today, but after the latest round of disappointment coming out of Ark Studio, it's time to get real. Welcome to the channel. I am Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and normally I would be giving a full breakdown on the latest ARC news, you know, kind of based on the community updates, and there will be some of that in today's video, but it just felt like the time to break it all down and explain what is happening with ARC. As always, if you aren't yet a subscriber, please consider hitting that sub button and ringing the notifications bell to receive my future upload alerts, and here's what's going on with ARC. So I wasn't sure where I would be going with this one, but I ended up settling in on a five-step breakdown sprinkled in with the latest news. And by the way, these are not in rank order. And of course, as always, chapters are available. But let's start off with Ark Survival Ascended itself and the optics surrounding this game. And this is still a major issue for why this game is teetering on the brink of disaster. Now, I'm not going to go through it all again, line by line, for the millionth time, but when you tease a game as a free graphical upgrade for current Survival Evolved owners, and then you take that away and you turn it into a series of purchases with Arc 2, without Arc 2, just Survival Ascended the base game, then over to the full Ascended experience as a standalone option, while also, lest we forget, shuttering all support and the official network for Survival Evolved, well, let's just say that you aren't off to a good start. Throw in the fact that Ascended only launched with the island in the map rotation and still, by the way, will remain only the island now for even longer as last night Wildcard did kind of what we all expected would happen and delayed the launch of the center citing their partners who are working on that remaster and how it was not ready for release, giving no ETA for a possible launch, and yeah, you've got a game in Ascended touted as the evergreen ARC experience, still by the way in early access status, and still with only one map in the entire rotation. That's a terrible look for Studio Wildcard and Survival Ascended, when the game they decided to move on from evolved, functions better, has many times more playable content, and consistently shows higher player counts than their latest release, Survival Ascended, leading many to label Ascended as nothing more than a straight cash grab, a crowdfunding effort, although not labeled as one, so that enough money could be accumulated to fund ARC 2 development, the future of which is still very much up for debate. I also have to mention the terrible technical state of Survival Ascended, again with just one map. It has major issues, still plaguing console players with a save game issue that has been around since 2023. I personally can't remember the last time I even saw a console update, but again, it feels like December. And for PC players, Ascended requires the best components money can buy, if you want to play it on anything other than low settings, with no guarantee it will be a stable playing experience. It was claimed that Ascended was built on a completely new and fresh code base, yet all the same bugs, all the same gremlins and exploits from Survival Evolved still exist in this new offering, making the claims of a new framework from the ground up a bogus argument. From the very second ASA was teased and then taken away, turning it instead to a paid upgrade, Ascended has had an issue with optics, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, if ever. So you've got an optics issue at number one, and by the way, that's a major issue there, and it's going to be much the same with issue number two, which is ARC's lack of innovation coupled with strong survival game competition. Now, the lack of innovation aspect is self-explanatory, and it's okay for Survival Evolved. I mean, that's an eight-year-old game, but Ascended doesn't get that same free pass. It is the same game. It's the same core mechanics. It's the same everything, just with remastered environments now in Unreal Engine 5, along with quality of life mods from Evolved now baked into the game. Nothing has changed. I mean, nothing has evolved. No pun intended there. And so you've got two identically themed ARC games now on the market. One is the complete experience. The other is a slightly better looking version, but entirely incomplete 
and stuck in what feels like development hell. And, you know, players saw right through that smoke. They see Ascended for what it is, and they choose to stick with Evolved. The bigger subtopic of this number two talking point is the current competition for ARK, and this is an aspect you can't ignore. As Ascended continues to kind of stumble around in the dark, only one map, delays, technical issues, etc., the survival game market is offering up some juicy alternatives to ARK, and it is pulling away players in droves. You've got Pal World, Enshrouded, and Nightingale, which are all new and tearing it up in their own respects. Once Human put on a great beta and stands poised to hit the market running. Hell, even Helldivers 2 is lighting it up like a pinball machine for player counts, and I know that isn't a traditional survival game, and by the way, I'm air quoting here, but it's a great game. And in the end, players want to play great games. And by the way, it doesn't get any easier for ARK, as you also have the likes of Stalker 2 and Frostpunk 2 dropping later in 2024, all promising to scratch that survival itch. The number three issue comes down to Studio Wildcard and their inability to communicate effectively. And this starts at the top, so upper level management, including snail games now some viewers out there might ask what does a studio and publisher not communicating or communicating poorly have to do with a game dying to which i would answer a whole hell of a lot wildcard frequently does not answer pressing community questions or even handle concerns instead they consistently only make statements at the very last minute and even then provide little details often staying as vague as possible for weeks, players were asking why the Shastasaurus was not to be the community-voted creature to be included on the center map. And for weeks, that question just went unanswered. Instead, the Gigantoraptor took its place for that map, and now even that map has been delayed. So it's just a new creature that will instead be added into the island map. Now, here's the thing. Nobody believes that Wildcard didn't know the poor technical state of the center before this week's crunch. So why sit on that delay announcement for so long? Each and every time Wildcard does something like this, it further chips away at player confidence, which I believe if we polled the ARC player base right now is definitely at its all-time low. You could even lump snail games into this discussion because staying vague, even deceptive, is also their MO. Just recently, they were slapped with a compliance letter from the SEC telling them that they needed to clarify how they were recording debts and payments, which, if you're a publicly traded company, is not the kind of letter you want to be receiving. Anyways, back to Wildcard, and sensing that they were about to get a monster level of pushback, they tried to smooth over the situation, but in true Wildcard fashion, added even more fuel to the flames. Offering up the Gigantoraptor on the island was a mild offense. I mean, you never want to use a hot topic as a reward item, and this creature and what is tied to it is a hot topic. But it is easily overshadowed now by what they published about the Oasis Soar. You know, that pay-to-play dino included in this first adventure pack because it is now showing as having the ability to res dead dinos, further strengthening the argument that these DLC packs are nothing more than pay-to-win. Number four has to be the split arc player base, and it doesn't take a genius to have seen this one coming a million miles away. The fact that Evolved, being run by unofficial server host, is outplaying the officially supported studio-run Ascended says volumes for how this game is being received. I know that many players have never bought into the statement that evolved files could not be brought over to Ascended, and therefore you had to start new and fresh with ASA. But the fact that the eight-year-old version run by the community and no longer receiving official studio support is outnumbering the latest and greatest ARC experience says everything you need to know for how Ascended is looking and why I feel it is on life support, if not dead. Go ahead and argue that point about how when the new maps drop, everything is going to return to normal and... Yeah, maybe if this was 2015 and ARK had just launched, that statement could hold water. But even if Wildcard came out tomorrow and said, hey guys, every map will release in the next week, all the way up through Gen 2, even then I still don't think we would see Ascended player counts spike back up to what Evolve did in the past. 
Ark will continue to die as long as it maintains a split player base. And believe me, I'm not advocating one way or another. I'm just stating fact. And finally, number five item, Snail Games, Wild Card, and the all-important dollar. Modern game development takes money, although Pocket Pair and Arrowhead have shown us that AAA gaming budgets are not needed to publish explosive new releases, but still, you know, without money, the developers and staff are not paid and then the content is not published. Snail Games has shown us time and time again that they cannot be trusted with any ARC dollars that are earned. I could cite the failed electric car company venture fiasco that was brilliantly covered by New Blitz. Hod has done some amazing work here as well, and I've also tried to contribute on this front with some deep dives into their financials. But the point is, Snail is bad with money, and they control the purse strings for ARC, ARC 2, ARC Ascended, and yes, Studio Wildcard. When your publisher is burning through wads of cash that was earned almost exclusively from ARC sales, it's not a good sign as to the future of that game. Now, I rarely speak of other ARC content creators, largely because I just don't watch much YouTube, and partially because of the frosty, yeah, let's call it that today, frosty reception I received when covering ARC, but one video that I did happen upon was Xfibo's latest ARC video about how ARC was dying. And for the most part, I largely agree with his points, except for one. He speaks about microtransactions and how if they are installed into the game, which I've already said based on the evidence that they will be, anyways, that these MTXs and the income received from these transactions could then be reinvested back into ARC development, such as cheater enforcement and other needed areas of concern. This is wrong. Not Xfibo's thoughts on it all, but what would happen with any money earned from this system. ARC is Snail's cash cow, and based on their previous published reports, they proudly boast about how little they spend in relation to revenue generated. Snail, and let's lump them into this conversation, Studio Wildcard, aren't all of the sudden just going to expand the workforce, correct all the coding issues plaguing Ascended, and then beef up code enforcement to handle the massive cheater and exploit ticket backlogs. They're just going to continue on with the same old methods while the microtransaction profits are then banked and, you know, probably blown on some other failed venture or game that is dead on arrival. Say nothing about how Snail still has not conducted its quarter four financial call, but if, and I've openly stated this, they did not do well with Ascended sales, they will be dependent on these extra sales, things like adventure packs, skins, etc., not to create new content and or fix the major bugs, but instead to just keep the company going and the lights on, so to speak. I could also throw in a few honorable mentions here that did not make this list, including things like the cheaters and hacks still deeply embedded in the game, such as the rampant duping exploits, Nitrado's horrific ticket response times, if they respond at all, and how about the past? which repeats itself. And so we've seen this playbook from Wildcard and Snail, but this time they're attempting to whistle us a tune that only has one note, which kind of sounds more like Morse code than a melody. Now, all of this leads to a player base that has fallen by nearly 90% of its initial sales numbers. And honestly, I don't see it getting any better. I mean, it's kind of reached that point of terminal velocity, if you know what I mean, where it would take a freaking miracle for ARK to be able to rebound. I mean, I hope it does. I like the Dino Sandbox experience when it works, but when will that happen? I look forward to reading your feedback on this one. Overall, I know it's often thrown around, but this feels like the lowest ARK has ever been, and I know for some, ARK is effectively dead, killed by its own self-inflicted wounds. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my upload alerts. All my socials, including Twitter and my Discord server, can be found in the video description. A huge thanks to those of you that have already hit subscribe, and it's not too late to do so as we make that last push up to the 200,000 subscriber mark, and I would love to have you along as we hit that milestone. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.